We have with us today the most fresh and sweet news from the Korean buyer industry. Hello, my name is Juri Wang and I will be delivering some of Korea's hottest buyer tech issues today for you. So don't forget to subscribe, like and set your alarm for Buyer TV. For today's buyer news, we will be exploring how Korean panelists advised overseas buyer companies regarding entering the Korean market at the global IR at JPM hosted by Korea Bio. In addition, we will deliver the news on the Korean government's ambition for the advanced regenerative medicine and marine biotechnology markets. We will also bring you the news on Yuhan Corporation's lung cancer treatment, which has won the title as the 31st homegrown novel therapy in Korea. Korea Bio held the Global IR at JPM Online on January 21st to 22nd together with BioCentury, a renowned American buyer news outlet, and Sidley Austin, a global law firm. The first day of the event was filled with a panel discussion chaired by the American side on the outlook for cooperation between Korea and the U.S. in the bio industry under Biden administration. In addition, an investment briefing session by eight leading Korean startups aiming to enter the global stage was conducted. On the next day, the Korean side chaired another panel discussion with presentations being given by seven promising global startups. Bridge Biotherapeutics CEO James Lee, Bridge Biotherapeutics Non-Executive Director Deborah Chi, ABL Bio CEO Sangun Lee, KTB Network Life Science Investment Director Jiung Chun and Kotra Project Manager Pumjin Park participated in the session. They discussed the Korean clinical environment and the Korean government's initiatives to promote cross-border cooperation. Let's take a look at each of them one by one. First, Deborah Chi, non-executive director of Bridge Biotherapeutics, highlighted that six out of top 10 CROs are Korean companies. She added that they have great competitiveness and experience on par with global companies. KTB Network Life Science Investment Director Ji Yung Chun said that the co-stock market has an excellent IPO system as well as rich experience. He proposed cross-border cooperation to foreign companies that are interested in the Korean market. Meanwhile, ABL Bio CEO Sang Wen Lee expressed his high expectation that the current act of cross-border cooperation between Korean and Chinese companies will expand its boundaries to R&D and investment fields. Following that, co-chair project manager Pum Jun Park introduced the Korean government's initiative. He said that thanks to Korea's effort to promote investment in R&D, the biohealth industry recorded remarkable achievements in exports in 2020. Session chair James Lee concluded that the panel discussion with the hope that cross-border cooperation will greatly increase going forward. If you missed the opportunity to participate in the Global IR at JPM event, you can find the video on Korea Bio's YouTube channel, Bio TV. The Korean government has presented a blueprint to help domestic companies enter the global advanced regenerative medicine market, which has shown an annual average growth of more than 22%. According to the blueprint, the government will invest 600 billion won in R&D over the next 10 years for further development of advanced regenerative medicine. The government plans to maintain and even strengthen the technological competitiveness of cell therapies. Furthermore, it will especially focus on expanding its investment in R&D of gene therapy, an area in which Korea lags behind global competitors. Advanced regenerative medicine, also known as stem cells and gene therapy, is a next generation medical technology. It is expected to be used to cure disease completed by replacing or regenerating damaged tissue by transplanting living cells. Other therapies using advanced biomedicines containing human cells are also included in this category. Cell therapies and gene therapies are a good example. The government has laid the legal foundation with the Advanced Regenerative Bio Act since its inception on August 28, 2020. Furthermore, it has launched a relevant policy deliberation committee. It appointed Minister of Health and Welfare 
Tok Char Kwon as the chair and Minister of Food and Drug Safety Kang Nip Kim as vice chair. Therefore, this blueprint can be translated into the government's strong will. The government plans to enhance industrial competitiveness based on world-class technology by establishing a reliable safety management system. Let's hope that this plan will help the more than 50 bio-venture companies to go public and launch homegrown advanced regenerative therapies so that Korea can emerge as an industry leader in Asia. Marine biotechnology utilizes marine creatures to develop biomaterials. Only 1% of the more than 330,000 marine organisms in the world are developed as biomaterials. Therefore, there is a high possibility of developing new biomaterials using marine organisms in the future. Under these circumstances, the government has formulated a national plan to create a growth engine to bring vitality to the domestic market and predominate the global marine biotechnology market. The Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries aims to secure 80% of technology compared to advanced countries while reducing its dependency on imported materials to 50% as its first targets. To make this happen, the government decided to allow the Marine Biobank to provide more information to companies and streamline the process of acquiring license and permits. In addition, a Marine Bio Research Innovation Council will be established with the participation of Korea Bio and the Korean Society for Marine Biotechnology in an effort to pursue innovative and challenging R&D tasks. To name a few, it is expected that marine microbial materials that can be replaced, antibiotics or prevent the red tide, are being developed by researching microorganisms and the ecosystem of marine life raised in farms. In addition, digital breeding technology to produce high-quality marine products will be developed. For this purpose, genomics information on captive bred fish will be organized into a database and thereby the profit of fisheries can be enhanced. Alternative seafood products like artificial tuna based on seaweed and value-added technologies for customized seafood products utilizing 3D food protein will be also developed. Let's keep an eye out for whether the marine biotechnology industry will become a new growth engine for Korea. In just two and a half years, Korea's 31st novel therapy has finally been revealed. It is Yuhan Corporation's non-small cell lung cancer treatment, Lakasa. It is a targeted anti-cancer drug that inhibits the proliferation and growth of lung cancer cells by interfering with the transmission of signals involved in their growth. Lakasa is less toxic to health cells. This drug is to be used for patients with advanced lung cancer with mutations in specific genes and have already been treated for lung cancer. Therefore, it is possible to use this therapy for patients who have become resistant to the first and second generation EGFR targeted therapies. Lung cancer is the most fatal of all cancers causing the large number of deaths of people in Korea. In case of metastasis to other organs, its five-year survival rate stands at 8.9%. Non-small cell lung cancer accounts for the majority of all lung cancer cases, with 30 to 40 percent of them turning out to have mutations. The first and second generation targeted therapies are commonly used to treat these patients, but 50 to 60 percent of these patients become resistant due to the mutations. It makes them not respond to existing therapies anymore. Yuhan's Laclaza is a third generation targeted drug and is more powerful to the resistance to the mutations. Therefore, it is expected to be the most needed and suitable treatment option. Now I wonder who will be the next to win the title of the 32nd homegrown novel therapy in Korea. Well, that's it for today's news. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and set your alarm for Bio News. And make sure to have Korea Bio as a friend on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. I'll come back to you in two weeks with more new interesting issues related to the Korean bio industry. Bye.